Welcome to the Public AI Cafe. Today we present the speaker, Bobby Bauf. Hi, Bobby. Hi, everyone. And we, <laughs> great that you're here. Most important. So we have our speaker today. He, as a Bobby, is AI consultant and researcher. And he will present to us his talk and basically a workshop. This time it's going to be exciting a workshop uh, uh, called Image Generation Using Midjourney, Dalle 3, and Adobe Firefly. So, who are we? I'm Carmen McWilliams uh, from Grassroot Arts. And then we also have Emma from Grassroot Arts. We are the Hi. moderators. Hi, Emma. <laughs> Hope you also well. So this cafe is a part of the European Research Project AI for Media. So a little bit the rules. Please take notice that the session will be recorded. No confidential information shall be shared in this cafe session. In this cafe, the speakers express their personal view and opinions. This is not necessarily the official AI for Media project opinion. So, what's the cafe about? It's an online forum to gain insight into the European AI scene. And it's really important for networking. We are existing now more than four years, so there is quite a community out there. And always feel free afterwards to contact the speaker or me or the moderators when you have more questions which you don't think about now. So it's interactive, which means uh, not like in Zoom, you can talk to us. You can only write to us, unfortunately. This is a program where you can use your menu on the right side. And if you have questions for us, for the speaker, or later when it's going to be interactive in the workshop, please write it in. I'm soon writing you a message where you see where you can write. And just type it in and send it to us. We're going to receive it. Thank you. And all out there, great that you're here today. This is really super. We only also live because you as participants are there, have interest. And so I hope it's going to be a good time for us. And here, now I introduce Bobby, the bio, it's a short bio. With over a decade of experience in software product development, Bobby seamlessly navigates the intersection of cutting edge technology and business efficiency. Starting his career as a software developer, he quickly advanced into project and product management roles. He has managed projects and consulted various clientele from startups to large corporations, governmental organizations and NGOs. He has spearheaded multiple innovative ventures and programs focused on AI tools, satellite data, and space technology. An alumnus of the Rotterdam School of Management with a master degree in business information management, he is currently pursuing a PhD researching AI simulations, digital twins, and synthetic data. So this is very impressive, and we are very proud we have you here today. Thank you, Bobby. And we give you now the floor so you can also introduce yourself and start your presentation. I have to make you now the moderator. This takes a second. I'm now making you a moderator. You should see a pop up. Yeah. And thank you, we Carmen. See your you see my PowerPoint. presentation? Yes. Great. Great. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Hi, everyone. And uh, thank you for the lovely introduction, Carmen. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk about image generation. And uh, it's nothing new. Most probably you see nowadays gener AI generated images all over social media. It's getting actually kind of uh, crazy lately. Um, but I want to show you how it's done. And hopefully you learn something new from today's session. I'm going to go through some theoretical background on how images are generated. I promise I'm going to keep it short uh, and just try to give you analogies so you can really understand 
the different models and how we got to the point where we can generate photorealistic images. Then we'll go through some of the recent trends, more specifically, um, how we got to the point where uh, in the past uh, about year and a half, two years, to the point where we generate really uh, high quality images. I'll cover a bit of the ethical concerns. And at the end, there will be a live demo where I would ask you to post in chat your suggestions of images that you would like to see generated live. We'll compare different tools. My favorite tool is Mid Journey. I've been using it for a year and a half now or so. And we'll compare it with Adobe Firefly and even DALI 3, which is integrated directly into the Bing search engine. And of course, there will be a few minutes left at the end for your questions, which I hope uh, there will be enough time to answer. A bit of a disclaimer, this is not a technical workshop, even though I'm going to try to explain a bit of the technical aspects. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into that. I'll just uh, cover how to use these tools. So this is really more of a UI workshop. How do we interact with the various tools? We are not going to see any code here. We are not going to um, code anything. It's really just the user interface. And I'll be showing you some images, of course, uh, which I, I have, most of them I have generated myself. If the model is biased, don't blame that on me. Uh, as you can probably imagine, it's been trained on various types of data, but it can never be um, fully perfect as we would like it to be, or at least not yet. So these are not models built by me. Don't lay the biases on me. And this is just for educational purposes, of course. Okay. A bit of a background now <clears throat> on how, the, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> on how this um, on how these models work. Even though most of you might think that this is all new development, <clears throat> it's nothing new actually. As we started talking about image generation using um, various machine learning techniques more than 15 years ago. So this is um, an explanation from a scientific paper published in 2006 about autoencoders. And just to give you a bit of an easy to understand and remember example of how autoencoders work, imagine you have a closet full of a lot of different objects and things, but it's a mess. What you would like to do is Take everything out, rearrange it, and then put it back. And imagine you have a magical organizer uh, which can remember the structure of the closet and then recreate it from, uh, it from its initial state. This is a very simplified explanation of how autoencoders worked back in the day, and we were able to recreate an image uh, from pre-trained uh, version to true fine-tuning with, with an encoder and decoder and finally create something very similar to the original image. It took a bit of time, but in 2015 there was another hype wave regarding image generation. I remember it myself, maybe uh, a lot of you also would remember there were these so-called uh, deep dreams that were all over uh, this uh, area and overall people were talking a lot about them. Basically, um, convolutional neural networks were trained on creating images from scratch. However, they were very bizarre, very abstract. And this is an example here from a paper in 2015 where these images consisted of smaller images. So it was not really something that we would expect. And they were very, very weird. 
but just again to give you an example of how this works imagine an assembly line where you, you have a factory for creating the image and at each station you have a different expert taking care of a different part of the image until you get to a point where we have the image and by a different part here i mean we start with the overall shapes of objects then we go deeper into the details so if we take the example of a dog for example if you want to generate a dog we start with the silhouette of the dog then we go deeper into the colors of uh, of the fur of the dog then the details of its nose or tail and eventually we get to a point where we have a dog this is how cnns work again very simplified way of explaining it just for the sake of uh the presentation and later a few a couple of years down the line we got to the point of uh generative adversarial networks or the so-called guns which i would like to give the example of an art forger and an art detective the art forger tries to fool the art detective of what's real and what's fake so um it learns from real images and tries to reproduce them as best as it can while the art detective tries to spot the fake image these two um, networks they compete with each other and constantly improve because of the result and we got to the point where some very realistic images albeit very uh, small resolution were generated already in 2017 and this is where we started seeing some useful applications finally like removing the background around the person in an image or re or doing the reverse painting the background in a certain way and finally we got to the point of diffusion models diffusion models are also not that new this is a um, an example from a paper from 2020 where think of a to understand diffusion models think of a sand castle where you have a lot of sand and from that sand you want to build something meaningful with shapes and uh, different details and here to illustrate a bit more in how it works it's again kind of the encoder and decoder function where you have forward diffusion and backward diffusion so we have a castle then the sea comes in destroys the castle, levels it with the rest of the sand. And then from that, we try to recreate the same sand. So going back to images, this is, this is done by introducing white noise. So um, we have the original image and we have a model that gradually obscures the image. And then we have another model that tries to remove the white noise until we get to a point of um, an image that looks like the original image and this is how all of these image generation tools or most of them work actually nowadays they're based on diffusion models a lot of them have guns incorporated in there as well it's a mixture of different models that work on different aspects and details of the of the image but basically we train the model to understand how images are trained or uh, how images are created sorry and from there, we try to create something new based on just this fog of white noise. We clean it up until we get to an image. So this was the very, um, very brief theoretical explanation of how things work. Now I'm gonna start showing you things. So it's getting progressively more interesting, I hope. This is an example. Uh, this is the example of what I just told you um, of how the, image is generated from a, a fog or white noise. This is based on, uh, on mid-journey. Mid-journey starts the image generation, or at least starts showing us the image generation a bit um, farther down the process when it's already, it already has the shape. So if we want to generate a, a wooden detail uh, maple leaf, is this maple? I'm actually not sure. But if we want to generate a leaf, we start by this uh, at 10%. This is the, according to Mid Journey, this is the 10% milestone of the image generation. And then we have the 20, 30, et cetera, until 100. And you can see how it starts by just outlining the overall 
shape of the object, then the shades and the different colors. Then later it starts outlining the details until at the end we even have this wooden frame around it that looks very beautiful. So this is the gradual process of how things are, uh, how images are generated. And now for the sake of showing you something more interesting, I decided to show you how Mid Journey, and I'm also going to show you uh, the Adobe Firefly um, results, how they have evolved in the past two years. So Mid Journey was released, the first version of Mid Journey was released in March 2022, uh, while Adobe Firefly was released one year later, the first version, last year in uh, March. Mid Journey, so just to make sure that all of you are aware if you haven't heard of it it's a it's a um, tool based on discord discord is a communication platform where people can chat talk to each other share um, a lot of different things and it's very it's quite commonly used by streamers mid journey works fully in discord and it's a paid service it's not that expensive I think uh, it's around $10 a month, but uh, it's not free. Adobe Firefly is currently free. You can use it um, to a degree. There's a limitation of how many images you can generate per day, I believe. While it's still in beta, the, um, the intention of Adobe is to introduce their Firefly model, which is for the generation of images, directly in their Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, etc. It's already in there. I think it's in Illustrator. I think Photoshop also has it in the latest version. I'm not certain. But you can use Adobe Firefly as a web-based tool. I'll show you a bit later how directly to use it for free for now. It might at, at some point in the future uh, become paid as well. And then there's DALI 3, which is com completely free, again, to an extent. You can't generate too many images per day. And it's directly integrated in the Bing ecosystem. I'll show you how to use it a bit later as well. So just keep this in mind that MidJourney is paid, and it's trained on, on a lot of data from the internet. There's been a lot of controversial um, <clears throat> discussions around the type of uh, images that has been trained, whether it's fully free or publicly available images, or there's also been some proprietary data used in the training model. While Adobe Firefly is fully trained only on the Adobe stock um, images. So all the images trained in the uh, used to train the model are actually owned by Adobe. Because of this, Mid Journey has a lot higher capabilities while Adobe is still not as powerful, but it's, again, free and uh, more probably ethically sound, even though Mid Journey is my favorite because it's really powerful. So now I'm gonna show you how, uh, how it progressed throughout uh, the different versions. I decided to give you an example of, this is the prompt to the left that you can see. For those of you that don't know, um, these type of models are used with this kind of prompts where we tell the model what image we want to see, to have generated. So for me, Journey, I chose this uh, prompt just to show you how it progressed. So we are looking at an elderly French woman with deep wrinkles and a warm smile, sitting in a charming Soho cafe filled with plants, looking out the window, wearing a bright pastel linen blazer, floral silk blouse, etc. These are the images that Mid Journey version 1 and version 2 were able to generate. As you can see, it's ugly and it's not good and it doesn't look like anything proper. So let's see how it progressed. Mid Journey version 1 released in March 2022. One month later, we already had the version 2, which kind of is better. At least we have the proper shape of a head, but it's, it's still ugly, right? Then we had the version 3 a few months later still very ugly and now get ready because in november 2022 they released version 4 and you can see the big jump in quality version 4 even though it's not 
as good and there are still some problems here with her glasses um, there's a bit of a problem her eyes don't look that good but it's it can pass for an oil painting and it's the level of understanding of the prompt went to a new level here because it finally understood that i want a, a pastel linen blazer and floral silk blouse so it started painting that while before it didn't really achieve this and then one year ago almost in march 2023 mid journey released version 5 and this is the result as you can see the jump between version 3 and version 4 and then between version 4 and version 5 is really big this already starts looking like something photorealistic even though the resolution is not as high as we would like it to be it's really good and then in the same month adobe firefly was released the first version again the image to the right here mid journey is paid to, to the two is paid while adobe firefly is free and trained only on adobe stock images so as you can see it's not as good it switches around the what i wanted it to be i wanted the blouse to be with uh, flower um, motifs and her face looks a bit out of yeah out of proportions i would say but it's still really good result for a um, freely accessible model and then in october last year they released firefly version 2 which got to a really good level of quality um, compared to mid journey probably at the same level and we are starting to talk about photorealism here at this point if you pay really close attention you can find some things that are a bit weird but mostly 99 percent of users will most probably not not say that this is an ai generated image um, i would like to draw your attention to how adobe firefly tries to generate um, more diverse group of people in adobe's approach towards image generation inclusivity and diversity are, are, are at its core so unintentionally using the exact same prompt adobe firefly is generating more variety of people while mid journey at this point still sticks to just mo mostly white people which is as you can imagine the majority of the images that he's been trained on and then just a couple of months ago mid journey released its version 6 which is still in alpha version so it's not even in beta yet or they're still tweaking it a lot and this is the result here in the version 5 it didn't really understand that much that i wanted a wrinkled face well here it got there and look at the so here we have different layers in the image in version 5 we have something blurred here part of a plant most probably um, and we have uh, another plant here behind her well here it starts to even blur the background and add more um, add better shading better lightning there's even a reflection on the window here look it's uh, it's really good this image in particular doesn't really have it but when i've played around with it there were even reflections in the glasses of the lady so the level of details is increasingly improving now let's see the same example a bit faster this time but instead of a old lady we are trying to generate just a, a something more simple this is how simple the prompt is just a lake in the mountain beautiful landscape bright sky so let's see the results mid journey version one looks like something out of a windows xp or something like that not really there and uh, the level of details is very bad version two starts to try to do some water reflection but it's not there the sky is also a bit weird with the clouds version three a bit better 
water reflection, but still not there. Then version four, again, the oil painting effect. Mid Journey version four was very artsy. And that's when, uh, in November 2022, that's when the big um, boom started around image generation because it got to the point where this can definitely pass for a good painting. The, the reflection in the water is uh, pretty good. And then version five. I don't know about you. This looks like something that can pass for uh, an iPhone photo or something. Really good level of details with the trees, with the reflection of the water, the sky. This is what Adobe Firefly version one generated with the same prompt. It looks okay. Uh, the sun is weird. But, and the uh, water reflection is not that good, but it's good again for a free model. And this was the first version. And then we have the version two, much better. Uh, here we can see the grass, which is very well detailed. And then in Mid Journey version six, we have a, again a big jump because the level of um, quality in the grass here for the separate flowers even, uh, got to a new level. And the water effect is more consistent. If we look at the left image here with Adobe Firefly, the water effect is trying to be there, but if we if we pay a lot of attention to it, it starts to look really, we, we can spot some really weird things like some um, out of place lines in the water and overall the lightning on the water is not that good. While here, it's um, a lot more consistent and it has more depth in it. And the shadowing is also very good. And as a third such example, I wanted to get something that's more common. It's smaller in size, but full of details and different colors. So I thought of, let's generate a cheeseburger. As you can see, the first two versions of Mid Journey didn't generate anything that looked like proper food. Version three started to get there, but I wouldn't eat that. Then the oil painting effect. Uh, it's a bit weird, but it definitely doesn't try to be a photorealistic image. It's really more about um, the painting effect, the more artist style. And it's much better. And then this is version five, which can definitely pass for a image taken out of a commercial for burgers. And I hope all of you had lunch already. So you don't get too hungry looking at this. This is what Adobe Firefly generated. If we pay attention to the details, the shapes and colors are a bit, are a bit off. So it's not that good when, when we ask it to generate such things. Version two, better, but still not there. Doesn't look as tasty. And then this is version six of Mid Journey, which it improves on the condiments and just overall the, the level of detail. And it's, we can again see the, how it's blurring the, the um, um, back layers of the image for more realistic effect. And then probably most of you who have read or seen anything related to image generation have heard of um, the fact that AI really struggles with hands, and it's a thing. It's really a thing there. Um, the, I'm not even gonna show you the first two versions of Mid Journey here, as you can see how bad version three even looked. Version four got there to the more realistic shapes, but again, these are hands with a lot more fingers than necessary. Version five, much better, but still we have some weird finger uh, shapes, so not there. And just to, to make sure that everyone understands this, upon each prompt, Mid Journey generates four versions of the image. At this point, with Mid Journey version five, about one or two of the images within a four, uh, within a set of four would have extra fingers. So they were really trying hard to make it better, but still not there. 
Adobe Firefly, I want to draw your attention to the diversity again. As I mentioned earlier, that when I, when we use the exact same prompt, which is a close-up of a handshake between two business leaders at a board meeting, so there's no mention of ethnicity, race, um, gender, etc. Here we see that Adobe Firefly immediately tries to diversify. So we have a female hand with a male hand of color. So more diverse, more uh, inclusive model. This is version two, uh, which again, the fingers are off, but we have even higher level of inclusivity with a more male looking arm with uh, nail polish. So we try to be as inclusive as we can here with Adobe Firefly. And finally, with the latest Mid Journey version, it's a rare thing to see weird fingers. Most of the time, it's good. People have just five fingers and they're properly sized. So uh, nowadays, when I played around with it, about one out of four images, when, when we ask it to generate them, has extra fingers or something weird happening. So it's almost completely there at understanding how many fingers human hands have. Same goes for eyes. Eyes are something that AI also struggled a lot. Nowadays, it, I think they nailed it. In version three of Mid Journey, when you ask it to generate a close up of a group of adults with clearly visible faces and eyes, it wasn't even able to generate humans. As you can see, it's weird. Version four with the more artsy style was there. At least we have proper eyes, even though they look very futuristic or I don't know, artsy again. And version five finally got there, more inclusive set of images as well. Uh, and it looks like with, when we ignore a bit of weird shapes and shadows, it looks pretty pretty good. It can pass for, for a proper photography. Adobe Firefly, again, to draw your attention towards the more diverse um, type of um, model. Again, a bit of weird uh, shapes here and there, but mostly it's okay. And then in version two, I think this is quite good photorealistic. It can pass for a good photo if you don't pay too much attention to it. And then the latest version of Mid Journey got to the next level. Uh, you really need to try hard to find problems in this image. And this is the reflection in the glasses that I even mentioned as a detail that they they have included. And by the way, one of the times when I tried with the exact same prompt in Adobe Firefly version 2 to generate a close-up of a group of adults with clearly visible faces and eyes, it gave me an image of three dogs. <laughs> well, uh, sometimes it can still hallucinate. Now I'm going to very quickly try to go through some of the additional functionalities that we can expect from such tools. So Mid Journey in particular has this so-called zoom out functionality. This is the same image as uh, here. This is the, we generate this image and then we can tell the model to zoom it out. And this is what it gets. We can zoom out at 1.5, which is basically um, filling in farther, um, farther area of the image to make it bigger with more details. And then we can zoom even farther here, as you can see. We start to see a bit more problems the more we zoom out because it's not generating the whole image together, but it takes the original image and just tries to fill in the area around it with uh, more details. But overall, it's pretty good. And then we can, I wanted to show you also the, the so-called describe function, which is once we generate the image, this is the original prompt again, we can also ask MidJourney to describe it. So it's the reverse. Instead of text to image, we have image to text um, functionality. So when I asked MidJourney to describe this, this image, it gave me four descriptions. And this was kind of the most accurate. A group of people smiling in glasses in the style of colorized identity politics. For some reason, it always tries to put some political um, style in there. Um, 
high angle, abrasive authenticity, darkest academia, I think it's a clothing style. So it even pays attention to how the people are dressed. And then you can even ask it to generate an image with the description that it provided you. So this flow is just to illustrate that the image can, uh, or that the model can understand text generating an image, but then it can also go the other way around. You can give it a, an image, it tells you what it understands from it, and it tries based on that description to generate another one. And this was the result. Pretty good if you ask me. Very quickly, through some more uh, things, there's different aspect ratios that you can ask the model to, to work with. Um, you can also tell it to exclude things from your images when you're um, gen when it's generating them. So in this example here, we want um, uh, a painting, but then we say don't put any fruits in the painting. So there's no fruit in the in the second prompt, and it just generates flowers. You can also ask it to generate something that repeated horizontally or vertically will fit into a full image like this. This is the original image and repeat it as many times as we want. It will always look good. So it's starting to get to the point where we can use it for different designs, exterior, uh, exterior or interior designs. And then there's also the video, which is not that useful, or at least I can't think of any useful practical applications, but it, it shows you how the model works. It starts with the blur and then it clears out all the details. There's also the remix functionality, which up until version four was of mid journey was specifically for the whole image. So if we ask it to generate a stack of pumpkins, this is what it gave us. Then we can say, well, change this same style, but uh, do it with a pile of cartoon owls. And this was the result. We swapped the pumpkins with owls. But then later, with the latest versions of Mid Journey, we have the in painting where we can change a portion of an image. So here in this case, to the left original image, we have um, just a river and we can we can say, well, well, initially we have a walking path and we can say change the walking path into a river. Or we can select a portion of the image and say, put a hot air balloon in there, or uh, there, there's a castle in the middle. So it doesn't touch any of the remaining parts of the image, it just changes the part that we selected. There's also the multi-prompts functionality where we can ask it to, def to generate an image in a different way. So for example, if we say generate a spaceship, it will generate something more coming out of a sci-fi movie. While if we say generate a space um, colon colon ship, it will generate a space um, environment background and a normal wooden ship and then mix the two images together. So this is how we use multi-prompt. And now very quickly, I'm gonna go through some more practical stuff because I'm sure you have the questions like, okay, this all looks cool. How do, you, how do we use it? I have spoken directly to um, game developers and designers and some of them have are already incorporating this type of um, tools into their processes to increase their productivity and efficiency. So, we are not talking about replacing designers before anyone asks that. We are talking about improving their efficiency and just helping them with your, uh, with helping them um, to do their job better and faster. So I've spoken to game developers and they gave me this exact uh, example where they needed to generate like a hundred different concepts of a, of a character. And if they had to do it manually, it would take them a lot, a lot longer than just running it through such a model, getting inspired using some of the images, 
tweaking it a bit uh, and just using it as the concept art. Same goes for other than character design. For example, we can uh, generate a whole city. It's not as detailed, but using it as a basis for inspiration, it's perfect. Or for those of you who are fans of um, developing your own mobile apps, for example, this is a perfect way of getting something pretty enough for a first version. So this breaks the barriers for people who don't have the budget or the skills to design something that's much better, but they still want to release something as an initial version. So here's what it gets when I asked it to generate the logo of a mobile fantasy RPG game. And by the way, the border radius, it cut the borders by itself. I didn't say that. I just said, give me a logo of a mobile app and it told it needs to cut the borders, the edges. Um, or even for commercial characters or concept design, again, for uh, for videos. So this is an example of a, um, of a character that was able to generate using this prompt, which can be used really for uh, for concept art, for example. Or, or you even have interior design applications. You want to um, very quickly give an example of some kind of a furniture or uh, a room, how it's layout. You can do that. I haven't, in this example, haven't gone much into the details, but it's pretty good if you ask me can be used for fashion design and clothing ideas, product design, look at this iPhone case, or even uh, furniture specifically. I asked it to give me a hyper detailed modern wooden wardrobe and this is what it came up with. Before you ask me, because I always get this question, whether it can be used for web design, it kind of can, but it's not that good. And because a web design has a lot of different images in it, it the model breaks here, as you can see, the, the faces of people and overall there, the images of people don't look good. But if we just want to use this as an inspiration, so we ignore the images, we just get the layout, maybe even the colors, it can be used for a stepping stone for a web design. Very briefly, through some ethical concerns, it can be used for fake news and it will be used for fake news in the upcoming future before we get to a point where we can easily uh, use tools that alert us for fake images and just be aware of that, especially for people who are not that tech savvy, it's good to point this to them. So these are this is just a fun take. I tried to come up with something more comedic. so a DJ Pope or a, a Donald Trump and Joe Biden performing together at a rock concert. So these are just more comedic examples, but um, be aware that these kind of tools can be used very easily for spreading uh, fake news. Okay, now the, the, the most fun part. I'm gonna show you how these tools work. To do that, I would like to ask you to, in the chat, directly write your own suggestions of what images you'd like to see generated, and I'll generate them live in front of everyone, and we can compare how the different tools work. To get there, while we wait for your uh, suggestions, I have prepared a couple of prompts to show you, so again, I invite you to participate. Send me whatever you'd like to see generated and we'll try to do it. This is how the mid-journey uh, inter interface within Discord looks like. This is the image that I generated yesterday for this presentation. And I'm now gonna try to generate an image of a Batman with a lot of details. So I've added a lot of description here just to really emphasize on 
different aspects of the image and I would like to show you what it's capable of doing. Uh, oh, maybe I should have put the aspect ratio differently, but that's a good idea, a good reason to show you the difference. I'll generate two different images. And then let's see how the same thing looks in Adobe Firefly. This is the Adobe Firefly interface. Uh, and here you write your prompt, it's a web-based. You click on generate and it starts working. Oh, maybe, maybe actually Adobe Firefly won't be able to give us anything that's proprietary, in this case, Batman. So I'll show you in a bit something else. And let's say, let's try uh, DALI. This is DALI. To access it, you just go to bing.com slash images slash create. Let's see if the same prompt will work here. DALI is my least favorite tool. It's not that good. For those of you who are using ChatGPT, the paid version, it includes the, the same model and it's better in DALI than, uh, sorry, the model works better than in ChatGPT than here, but it's also much faster. So this is what DALI generated with the, the exact same prompt. This is style comic Batman. Adobe Firefly refuses to do it most probably because it's proprietary. And this is what Mid Journey generates. And as I said, Mid Journey always generates a set of four. So these are the examples it gave us. And here, this image, the most left image, top left, looks like it came out from the latest, the Batman movie with Robert Pattinson. So it also has a very good inspiration from such publicly available data. And then the way it works is we select which one we want to upscale. So let's say this one. We, so we in mid journey, we count one, two, three, four. So we want to upscale number three, which is U3. And it gives us the high resolution version. Okay, I see someone suggested something. East Asian, happy, non-binary person, 8K, Canon. So, okay, so this this also includes some photography specs. Okay, let's see what it will generate. Someone suggested this. While we wait, I'm also gonna put it through here. Adobe Firefly also allows us here to the right to choose between the different styles we want to uh, use. So we can say more f more as a photo, more as a art piece, different types of art, color, note, composition, etc. But let's just use everything that by default. Hmm. Why is this not working? And the same in DALI. This is what Midjourney generates with this prompt. Looks pretty good to me. This is the Adobe Firefly. It selected art for some reason. Let's see if we can, if we choose photo. It was put at auto, so it automatically selects the style. And this is what it, what DALI 3 generates. Doesn't really really pass for non-binary. Yeah, I think mid journey is the best result here. Okay. We have time for one or two more. If you have suggestions in the meantime, I'm gonna show you something here. Um, Bobby, there's also questions I um, I got from yeah. the audience. Maybe the questions are interesting because the first question was why didn't you compare DALI-E in this comparison? You had 
always mid journey compared to Adobe Firefly. What about Dali? Dali is not as um, powerful when it comes to customization. And I want to show you how to use Dali here, but it's just much easier for the sake of the presentation to show you quickly things with Mid Journey and Firefly. Okay, second question. In recent weeks, fake nude images of Taylor Swift have sparked discussions in the US and exposed the problems with the technology. Are, this comes the question, are mandatory watermarks in the images a possible solution? What's your opinion? So first of all, all of these models, when you use them through this UI, you can't use them to generate anything controversial like that. When you try to generate new images, it will give you an error. It won't allow you. There are fail safes for that. However, you, people can run locally models like this. They are open source models and then there's no prevention, unfortunately. Um, and watermarking would be easy to avoid even then. So I don't think it's a good solution. Adobe Firefly does have a watermark. The moment you try to export any of the images, it puts a watermark. But putting a watermark is also not, it's not a good solution because it's very easy to avoid. You can just cut it out, you can blur it, whatever. I personally think at a later stage we'll have much more sophisticated and better solution to mitigate such risks and I don't think it will be a watermark. Okay, another question. Sorry, here in our cafe people love to set questions. <laughs> Keep them it's coming. Unusual. Yeah, very happy about it. Thank you everybody. So question, a comment about stable diffusion. Do you think it is competitive to Midjourney and others? Uh, stable diffusion is an open source model for those who don't know. Um, I don't think it's competitive. It's not as powerful and it's much more difficult to use. There are some web-based apps that run on stable diffusion, but they're not as good because all these models, the proprietary models like the Midjourney one, Adobe or even DALI, they're based on a mixture of sophisticated models that work together in um, in a, like a, in combination to generate something with higher quality. Uh, also, stable diffusion generates much lower resolution, or at least the last time I used it, it was much lower resolution of images. So I, no, I don't think it's competitive. However, I do believe that the future of such models is open source because it just most of the time the open source in this field at least is a bit behind in the development. I expect that soon we'll have better open source models that will be more popular than this, or at least as equally as popular as these proprietary ones. Okay, thank you. Next question, you're gonna now be, do you think there's an artistic merit in designing prompts and an iterative process? Should the user ever get the right to copyright? In your view, what's your view about this? When it comes to the copyright of all this, it's still a wild west, if I <laughs> might say. It's not really defined anywhere. Technically, all of the images that you use, that, that you can generate through these tools, at least the ones that I'm showing you, you can use for commercial purposes. You have the rights to use them. You don't, ex you don't have exclusivity rights, however. I think Midjourney has a, one of its pricing models has exclusivity rights. So anything you generate, you only own it. Um, but that's just a matter of a business model. When it comes to the actual artistry rights, I think it's a totally new field in, in 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 art. I'm not even sure if I can say it's art. More like in design, it's a totally new field. 
I wouldn't compare it to artistry. The value of an art piece, at least in my understanding, comes from the idea of who painted it, how they painted it, in what state of their life or mindset they were when they were painting it. So it comes with a story. If you go to a museum or to an art gallery, the value of the piece is not just the colors or the shapes, it's really who made it. Here you don't really have that. Here it's more focused on the visual representation. So I don't think we can talk about art, comparing this to art. Um, I think what we can talk about is really design. So web design, mobile design, even internal design, uh, internal um, interior design, sorry. All of this will be much more accessible and easier to uh, for anyone to use. Okay, thank you. And now another question. We are going to <laughs> the practical part. I'm sorry, <laughs> we did. Here comes. What do you think about nightshade? Do you think it will work? What is the outcome to the models produced on nightshade poison pictures? Poison pictures. Anyway, nightshade. I'm not familiar with nightshade. I know about the the model poisoning so-called so these kind of models they're easy to kind of easy so mid journey for example is not because it's a closed model but some of these models are easy to hack so in more more specifically we can introduce things in images that for a human eye won't be noticeable or a human won't see anything weird in, a, in the image but such a model that looks at the structure of the pixels and just the overall um, vector representation of the image, um, we can hide this so-called uh, so called poison code or whatever uh, to screw up with the image uh, model. And it, uh, it can make it uh, hallucinate more, so it will generate worse type of images. Uh, it's a risk for the companies that are um, controlling these proprietary models and that are developing them. For open source models, hopefully the community behind it can mitigate that. I personally don't think it's a good thing to do because as I said, this is not, for me at least, I'm not an artist, but I've also spoken to artists and I've seen the two camps some people can uh, really like it. Some people are very much against it. For me, it's it's not it's not the same as art. So I don't see such a big risk as a lot of others do. Okay, Emma, you also a question. I'm going to stop sharing at this point and. Can just yes. ask questions. We are, we are now finishing also the cafe. Emma, um, you have some I, questions? One second, yes. Um, so you talked about like games and of course like picture designs and everything, but did you already made yourself a video or like small movie? Uh, yeah, there are tools that allow the generation of short videos uh, from image to video that they kind of create the motion of an image. But there's even there are even tools that can uh, go from text to video. So mm -hmm. uh, it is getting there, not as good yet, uh, because motion is much more complex than just a still image. But uh, yeah, definitely. I but expect it, to, to get something very good soon there. Is it also with sound then? Like can, for example, you have a person that can they talk that's a different model but so uh, audio generation is a different model but you definitely can be combined yeah yeah and i have another question but it's like just for you <laughs> is it more fun for you to design a functional person or um a fictional pers person sorry or a realistic person it depends on the use case i I've used it for all kinds of uh, applications from photorealism to uh, comic book style images. It doesn't matter. 
Um, it really depends on the on the use case, and that's the beauty of these models. They are powerful enough to cover all these applications. Okay. You okay? I think we are now coming to the end of this cafe, and I'm very, very happy about what you have shown, and I feel like now uh, much more. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, ready to use those tools. Do we give other workshops? That's my last question. I never asked one. Do you have workshops on other? Do we, Bob, Beof, where do we find you? You can make a little bit advertisement about you. Where do we find more workshops? Well, yeah, you can. So whoever is interested can find me on LinkedIn. Just look for Bobby Bachov. Um, I do have other uh, workshops that I can uh, give, at, uh, and I've uh, done so at various events. Um, more technical workshops on different AI architectures, uh, as well as more project and product management topics like how to plan for an AI project, how to um, lead such projects, what are, what are the different uh, things to consider compared to traditional software development, etc. Okay, so you heard. Check it on, check Bobby on LinkedIn, and then you get further and further in all the infos you need. As we know, Bobby is an AI consultant and researcher. So <laughs> welcome and thank you for being here. Thank you for everybody being here, all the participants, which we cannot see in the moment. Thank you very much and hopefully see you in the next AI Cafe. So bye-bye. Thank, no? thank you, Carmen thank and you. Emma. Thank you, Thank Bobby. You. Thank you. Bye.